um, get priority. And that's why I'm jumping to his question. Plus, it's on topic. Did the classical economists think they were helping capitalism with their perfect competition theory because they made it seem altruistic and, and like it would solve the monopoly problem? Um, no, I, I think they had, first of all, utilitarianism in a sense is baked into the way they do economics. It's, um, it, 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 you know, there was nobody who questioned that. It's just, it's just baked into the formulas, except for the Austrians who were developing at the same time in parallel to the neoclassical economists and the, and the Austrians were combating the neoclassicals. But I don't think they were helping capitalism. They were trying to describe capitalism and they were trying to come up with mathematical models and trying to explain capitalism. And, and they came up, you know, their notions of marginal utility, which the Austrians came up with in parallel, but used properly. The neoclassicals used it to undermine capitalism. Whereas, whoops. That's weird. Why did my phone do that? All right. Um, so I don't think it was, I don't think they had a sense of morality or altruism. I, I, I think that, again, they had uh, uh, utilitarianism baked in. And this is where, if you will, the math led them. And they were very driven by math. They were very driven by trying to understand what they were seeing around. And it is true that if you produce an innovation and people then copy you and they compete with you, they drive, the, the tendency is to drive profit margins down. Ultimately, you know, if you get to perfect competition, zero. But um, there, there's no question, Samsung drives Apple's profits down. And if you had 20 competitors, they would drive the profits down even more. So what they're observing in a fundamental sense is a true phenomenon. But they are now... Be, in order to simplify it, in order to make it understandable, in order to um, uh, uh, make it mathematically possible, they they have to make certain assumptions, like uh, perfect competition, uh, perfect uh, sorry, perfect information, uh, perfect knowledge. Everybody has instantaneous. Everything's instantaneous. They simplify these things, and you see that in economics all the time. And then they start taking, and, and the, the, when they first do it, they know, oh, this is just implication, all, help, all else held constant kind of thing, but we know nothing's held constant. We know these are just simplifications. But then it becomes, well, this is perfect. This is perfect competition. So now it becomes the standard, and they forget all the, all the, all, all the caveats they put on it when they created uh, these ideas. And then, and then it starts serving a political process, a political purpose, and uh, qua political purpose, then you know they've lost. Um, if you think about it, antitrust laws that you know, which fed off of this view of monopolies, didn't really need uh, uh, the economist support. They were they were primarily driven by an idea of monopolies abusing their power. It didn't need. Uh, mathematical proof, uh, although it got it from the neoclassicals. And, and the neoclassicals then went in, and, and you can see economists working with lawyers to try to better define uh, monopolies and, and how they should be broken up and when. You see economists all the time participating in, the, in this work of, of what is the optimal structure, as if, as if Mises never wrote, as if Hayek never wrote, about the inability of central planners to determine those things and, and about the beauty of, of, of markets and how markets sift through the, these problems and without, you know, the, the, the idea of, of substitution products, the idea that you're not always competing with whom you think you're competing. My favorite example is, again, is Standard Oil. Who ultimately competed Standard Oil out of the business? Well, it was Edison because the business the Standard Oil was in in the 1870s was lighting and it's electricity that competed them out of the business of lighting. But nobody could see that. And that's the point Austrian economists make is you can't see the competition. And of course, what would have happened if Standard Oil had raised prices and lowered quality? Competition would have risen. So you're seeing a universe in which they drop prices and increase quality in order to prevent competition from rising. But the potential competition is always there. And the potential competition is placing real, uh, real influence. It's real influence, even though it's not real, it's just potential. It's creating real influence on the behavior of actual entrepreneurs. And then, of course, 
it's an ignorance of what motivates entrepreneurs and what motivates entrepreneurs is not just maximizing short-term profit. It's, it's looking into the long-term and, and, and figuring out how to best use the particular product that they have and sometimes giving it away for free is the best use of the product because then you discover new ways in which to monetize it. Think about, again, Facebook didn't know how it was going to make money early on. Had no idea. It just gave away a product for free and built up an audience based on that. And then over time, figured out how to monetize it. There's even that term, monetize it. How to, how to, how to monetize it. And, um, but it still gives it away for free. Same, in a sense, as Google. I don't know that Google, when it first came out with its algorithm and offered it free to all of us in a search engine, understood the way it would make money ultimately and where it would dominate the market ultimately is in search. I don't, you know, I, I don't know at what phase in the development, but that's the beauty of markets. That's the beauty of entrepreneurship is these things evolve, these understandings evolve, these, uh, and, and uh, partially it's competitive pressures that bring about, partially it's just the genius of entrepreneurs that, that they learn as they create. That is the creating, the creative process is a process of learning. The creative process is a process of learning. And you don't have all the answers before you start. Start. You don't know what will work and what won't work. You don't know how you'll monetize your success. You have to let it work out. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.